We are absolutely blessed to be here every Sunday, especially today, because we get to be together, and together we get to raise our voices to the God of heaven. I want to thank our elders, and I want to thank our preacher selection committee in just having the heart, in having the vision of calling our congregation to a special time of prayer. God bless you, and thank you for being our elders. I begin by wanting to show you the model, the blueprint that I have been using to form our emphasis on prayer. This is really, really rather special. It's really, really rather deep, but I'm gonna share it with you anyway. <laughs> I think most of us know what that is, but this is forming the foundation of our prayer activities. You know why? Because regardless of the issue, regardless of the want, regardless of our petitions, our prayer life should resemble the football. That is that if we sew it up on both ends and all around with prayer, it just cannot come apart in the middle. That's what the football told me. So therefore, what we have done is we have established the 10, 2, and 4 prayer plan. We have established our, our weekly prayer schedule. We have established these times of, of public prayer. Why? Because like that football, this whole process needs to be bathed and held together in prayer. And thank you for joining us in this today. I want to give you a short menu of what's to come. Right now, we are in the part of our preacher selection process where we are transitioning from inquiry to identification. In this process, we're going to pray today basically about our ministry, uh, our minister selection committee and our work. But today is going to be a day of prayer. When we transition again from identification to interview, we're going to do this again. When we transition from interview to invitation, we're going to do it again. And finally, folks, at the end of this process, what we envision is to have our new pulpit minister sitting here in one of our pews among us, I envision Terry sitting right next to him. I envision Greg Anderson being here again, just so where we one more time can come together as a congregation and lift our voices to God and say, thank you, Father, for what you have done for us. So that's what's coming in the weeks that are ahead. Today, we're going to be following a pattern where I am going to introduce a focus area for prayer, followed by a scripture reading, followed by a short devotional, followed by a time of silent prayer and meditation. And then one of the gentlemen are going, or is going to be coming forward to, uh, to lead us in congregational prayer. In terms of my role, I'm just leading your thoughts. Consider me and what I'm doing just in terms of providing an appetizer. You're going to be providing the rest of the meal. Take my words and don't just listen, but do your best to make these words your own. Try to internalize them. Make them your own. Bring them home. Because like I said, we really, really want to bathe 
this whole process in prayer. So as we get started, would you pray with me, please? Our almighty God in heaven, I pray that the words of our mouths and that the meditations of our hearts shall be acceptable in your sight, our Lord, our God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. The first area of focus is approaching God's holiness. The scripture reading is from Exodus chapter 3, verses 2 through 5. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. He looked, and behold, the bush was burning, yet it was not consumed. And Moses said, I will turn aside to see this great sight, why the bush is not burned. When the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses. And he said, here I am. Then he said, do not come near. Take your sandals off of your feet for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. In a devotional some weeks ago, our preacher selection committee was asked to take their shoes off and to recall this scene from the burning bush. The Lord said to Moses, take your sandals off your feet for the place on which you're standing is holy ground. In, in prayer, we are in God's presence. And as such, that is holy ground. And if taking our shoes off helps to remind us of that, then maybe it would be good to take our shoes off every time we pray. When Jesus taught his disciples to pray, he taught them, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. The moment Jesus died, the curtain dividing the holy place from the most holy, where the presence of God was, that curtain was torn from top to bottom. One could easily think that the curtain should have been torn from the bottom up. If man was doing it, that's the way it would have been done. But man wasn't doing it. God was doing this. This was of God. It showed God's presence in the act. And that curtain that once separated God's presence from man, that torn curtain is a powerful image of our open access to our God and Father. God's presence is not limited to a place like the temple. We live in God's presence and we live on holy ground. Effective, powerful prayer reminds us to be in a right relationship with God. We've been given the gift of the Holy Spirit. We are about living our lives with the fruit of the Spirit. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 16 reflects Leviticus chapter 11, where God reminds us, Be holy, for I am holy. Prayer must have a definite aim, which is in unity with the purpose of God. Sometimes, given the status of our search process, we won't know what his will is, but we pray in trust and in faith. We are seeking the man whom God knows is our next pulpit minister, though we don't know him yet. There are those among us who have health and aging concerns. 
There are those who are traveling. There are those who are lonely. Those who are struggling with an unknown burden. There are people suffering now in the wake of war. We have a lot of unknowns before us, but we have an almighty God within us. Romans chapter 8 verse 26 says, Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know what to pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. God understands our prayer even when we can't find the words to say them. When you pray, take off your shoes if you want. But remember, when we pray and as we live, we are in the presence of God, and this ground is holy. C.R. Gaines is one of our elders, and in that capacity, he is also the liaison between our preacher selection committee and the body of elders. Thank you for your service to all of us, C.R. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we praise your name. And Father, you are holy God, and we acknowledge that, and we give you the glory, Father, for your position as creator and Lord and God and King and Alpha and Omega. Father, everything is subject to you. And Father, we recognize that, and we praise you for that. And we're thankful that you listen to us and you listen for us. And Father, that you want to hear from us and that you're so involved in our lives. Father, we're thankful for the time of, pr of prayer this morning. And Father, while there's so many things on our hearts and on our minds, we want to focus at this point, Lord, to, to think on and to pray on your holy nature and your holiness. Father, we understand that you're holy. Father, we know and we believe what we read, that through the sacrifice of Jesus, our Savior, that we too are made holy so we can be one with you and one with him. And Father, we're thankful for that. Father, we do come to you with, with no contempt and with open hearts, Father. We, we, we want to lay ourselves bare before you. Father, for you know us even when we don't know ourselves. And Father, we know nothing is hidden from you. Father, we're thankful for this time that we can, even as we're praying, Father, just now that we can contemplate and think about your holiness and your power, Father, and your love and your forgiveness and your sovereignty. And Father, sometimes we're so busy we don't think on you enough like we should, but we do now. Thank you, Lord, for salvation. Thank you, Lord, for making the path for us to be your children, for the Spirit, and for Jesus and the sacrifice and the forgiveness and holiness that you extend to us through that. Father, as Brother Dave has mentioned this morning, there's also the focus for our preacher, se preacher se selection. And Father, we, we know it's an important role here, and we want to make the right choice. We want to make your choice, Father. We also want to all be involved, Father, in the work as we renew our focus at the local body here. Thank you for the church, Father. Thank you for my brothers and sisters this morning. Father, there's a sense of unity and, and peace, Father, as we come together to serve you. And we pray your blessings over us, Father. We, we, we ask for your, for your guidance, and we, we seek you, Father, as we work to serve you. Father, thank you for loving us. We honor and respect you, Father, and give you praise for your holiness. And all this we ask through Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Our second area of focus is to give honor to our Father. 
The scripture reading is Revelation chapter 4, verses 8 through 11. <clears throat> and the four living creatures, each of them with six wings, are full of eyes all around and within. And day and night, they never cease to say, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and who is and who is to come. And whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him who is seated on the throne, who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before him who is seated on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever. They cast their crowns before the throne saying, worthy are you, O Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power for you created all things and by your will they existed and were created if jesus is living in my mortal flesh is his oneness with the father showing itself in me what was true in the story of our Lord's birth remains equally true today. The Son of God was given to us by a direct act of God. We have become children of God also by a direct act of God. Thus, we are also his children and we've been given the right the opportunity to call on our Father any time. When Jesus walked on the earth, he was separated from his Father. But from that separation, we can learn that our spirit, like his, needs to be in contact with the Father. And that contact comes through prayer. Questions arise. Am I mature enough to identify myself with the Lord in this way? Is he getting his way in me? Is God seeing that his son is formed in me? Or have I carelessly put him in a corner or in a building for some other time? There's so much noise these days. Everybody seems to be shouting again, for what? For the son of man to be put to death. Get rid of him. We don't need him. I don't have time for him. There is shrinking room now for the Son of God. Shrinking room for quiet, holy communion with God. Would you join me in silent prayer, please? Joel Sumar is our youth minister. He is a important part of our ministry team. And as such, he's going to be working very, very closely with our next pulpit minister. We need to pray for him that the new relationship that will be forged will be one where God's name is lifted even higher than it is even now. Joel.
Do you bow with me? God, we lay our lives at your feet, our hearts, our thoughts. We desire to bring honor to your name. May we live, love, communicate, interact with the world around us in a way that our good deeds show who you are. That people will see the things that we do and think and praise you. That we can be like Daniel. That no matter what comes before us, no matter what it costs, that we will live in a way that brings honor to you. That when it costs us nothing, we'll live for you. When it costs us our reputation, we'll live for you. God, let us live our lives with integrity, that those around us will be blessed because they come in contact with your love, with your grace. There are so many instances that we can look at for examples of what it means to live in a way that honors you. We praise you that we are a congregation that when we see a need, we want to fulfill that need because it's what you would do. All we have to do is look around this auditorium at the people that are here and we can see those that are living in a way to honor you. We can look up on this stage at the shoes that we have brought before our congregation as a sign of their generosity, at a sign of their love for this community, a love for children, hearts that are touched by those in need. God, we love you. We thank you for the grace that we have. May all that we do bring honor to your name because we do it in view of your mercy and your grace. Amen. Our third area of focus is abiding, <clears throat> abiding in prayer. The scripture reading is John chapter 15, verse 7. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. And in 1 John chapter 5, Verse 14, the Bible says, And this is the confidence that we have toward him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. To abide means to live, to stay, or to dwell in a place. The Christian is to abide in the Lord Jesus and when that happens, we can know that he hears whatever we ask of him. In order for us to pray according to his will, we must ask that it be given to us. We must seek that we shall find it and knock that it be open to us. In our asking, in our seeking, and in our knocking, we are abiding. We are living in prayer. Prayer is the communication of an intimate, living union. Prayer naturally flows from a soul that loves Jesus. His word promises that he will answer us according to his will. And our Father trusts the members of his family with the affairs of his family. We pray for the man whom God has chosen to be our next pulpit minister. We pray for his family. We pray in thanksgiving for his willingness, 
to devote his life to ministry. We pray in thanksgiving for his preparation, his experience, the maturity of his faith. We pray with confidence in God's providence leading us to this very special servant as we continue to ask, seek, and knock for God's will to be open to us. John continues in 1 John chapter 5, verse 15, And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desire of him. Would you join me in silent prayer? Edison Covado is the pulpit minister of our sister Spanish congregation. He's part of our ministry team too. There's going to be a lot of interaction between our next pulpit preacher and our Spanish congregation. And therefore we want to pray for Edison and his work. We want to pray that the relationship that forms between our next pulpit minister and Edison and our sister congregation will be one that is blessed of God in every way. Edison. Vamos a orar. Thank you, Lord, for this special time. We know that you abide in us. That is what is a wonderful and blessing for us. We know we are looking for this person, this brother, that's going to come here to be a bless to the English congregation and as well for us. We pray that you abide in him because that is what he needs. A person who is going to love you, to understand how wonderful it is to serve you. And thank you for uh, being your temple and that your Holy Spirit as well, Jesus, and you abide in us. That the same happen to these men that you're going to bring here because we are trusting you to guide our heart and mind and to be wise so we can, uh, the person in charge to uh, tell the elders that this is the best candidate. But we, beside that, we trust is in you. And we appreciate and give you thanks for this time of prayer because that tell us that it's not us, it's you, the one that is going to guide us to choose the best men, especially for the elders, that you bless them, and to the, for them to choose the best person to be here with us. We love you so much, and thank you again for abiding in us. And Jesus, so we pray, give you thanks, amen. Our fourth area of focus <clears throat> is entitled a victorious prayer life. Mark chapter 1, verse 35. The scripture says, In the morning, long before sunrise, Jesus went to a place where he could be alone to pray. And in Luke chapter 10, verses 38 through 42, the Bible says, Now as they went their way, Jesus entered a village, and a woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. 
And she had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to his teaching. But Martha was distracted with much serving. She went up to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and troubled about many things, but one thing is necessary. Mary has chosen the good portion, which will not take, be taken away from her. Most of us will agree that the one, that one of the most difficult things we do as Christians is the one thing that Jesus seemed to enjoy the most, and that is to make time for prayer. But when we give ourselves to a time of prayer, we meet a lot of unsuspected and unforeseen distractions, don't we? Anything to get in our way, anything to prevent prayer. I'm sure you know this already, but I'm saying it so where we can recognize it clearly and face the fact that it is not just ordinary circumstances, but a designed, well-laid scheme of our enemy to prevent our being intimate with our Father. It's planned that way. Our enemy, instead of objecting to our prayer, will substitute preoccupation with a hundred other things in order to crowd out prayer. Martha was busy. She was doing a whole lot of good things. But Martha was so preoccupied and distracted, she missed the most important. We can be busy in the Lord's work. We can be busy in seeking our next pulpit minister. But anything we do that does not rest on the foundation of triumphant, spiritual, confident prayer will count for little. We should work for the Lord. But if we leave out prayer, if we take our eyes off the Lord, we too like Peter, will be overcome by the waves. One of the subtleties of Satan is to get us so busy, so occupied, so much on the go that our prayer is cramped and pushed into a corner and limited, if not entirely ruled out. And what's our excuse? Lord, I'm just so busy with church work that I don't have time to pray. Have we become Martha? We have a lot to do during this time of transition. We need time to rise long before the sun does, if that's what it takes to go to a place where we can be alone to pray. So as Jesus often left the crowds to go by himself to pray, let's say, Lord, I'm going to trust the responsibilities I have right now. I'm going to trust those to you. Let's promise ourselves to turn the volume of our lives down so that in that silence we can hear better the voice of God. As reflected at the end of the slide that's showing before us right now, Paul himself said that he was in despair. But look at the weight of the last sentence. This happened that we might not rely on ourselves, 
but on God who raises the dead. Folks, we must rely on God. And as we do, we're promised victory from the same God who raised Jesus from the dead. Would you join me in silence, please? When we look at the next two men who are going to be leading us in prayer, let's realize two things. First, that if our next preacher serves this congregation as long as Terry did, he will have a lot of impact on our young people of today. In 12 years, many of them will be married and have children of their own. And with Joel's help, we seek to have their input in our selection process too. A second thing that I want us to realize, when we look at men like Javier Ortiz, we can see the future of the church and we can be confident in that future. Javier? let's pray our heavenly father we 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 thank you father for um for for this day lord to to be together as one body lord to 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 worship you father right now we 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 come to you father for 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 your for your strength lord you know how um Satan, Father, um, he puts obstacles in our lives. He puts barriers, Father, that 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 for us it, it seems that we cannot um, tumble down, Father. And Father, we just want to ask you, Father, for for your strength, Father. You know, just. Help us, Father, to 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 over, to overcome them. Father, you know, give us strength, Father, to to fix our eyes on you, Lord. Father, um, just 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 give us peace in 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 our lives, Father, and Lord, you know, because um, just. Having a, a, a moment with you, Lord, it's 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 more than gold. Father, we ask you, all, Father, we ask you all of this, and it's in your Son, G Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Our fifth area of focus is continuous, watchful thankful prayer. As our 10, 2, and 4 prayer plan reminds us in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17, pray constantly. In Gethsemane, after Jesus had been alone praying for a while, he came up to Peter and some of the other apostles and found them sleeping. But Jesus said to Peter, could you not watch, that is, be alert, be awake? Could you not watch with me one hour? And in Colossians chapter 4 and verse 2, the Bible says, devote yourselves to prayer, keeping alert in it with an attitude of thanksgiving. Prayer 
is designed to accomplish God's ends in God's way, in God's time. Colossians chapter 4 emphasizes the high calling placed on us who believe. Continue in prayer. Watch in the same with thanksgiving. This scripture admonishes us to continue in prayer, to persevere. Don't stop. No finish line. No amen. As we grow in prayer, we must remember three things. First, we're to pray into God's plans and his purposes. God's will in God's time. Second, we need to sharpen our ability to recognize the deceitful activity of the enemy. He'll try to distract us and take away our prayer time. And third, we are to pray with thanksgiving. So in the coming weeks, we're going to be praying together. We're also going to be praying by ourselves, especially during this time of transition. Continue in prayer. Be alert in your prayer. Be praying in thanksgiving. Would you join me in silence, please? What I said previously about Javier certainly applies to Josiah McNeil, with Josiah representing the future of the church. I just can't help but to be confident in the future of our Lord's church. Josiah. Please come back with me in prayer. Thank you, dear Heavenly Father, just for the power of prayer, Lord. Letting us pray at any time to you, Lord, for anything we need. For letting us continue in prayer and to continue to follow your word, Lord. As Paul says in Romans 7, I do not do what I want to do, and what I do not, do not want to do, I do. Or, you know, we, we always face trials, Lord. We always have trouble doing what we need to do, Lord. We know that with your power, Lord, we can overcome temptation. We can overcome the deceitful word of the devil, all the things that go in our life, Lord. No matter if we work, whatever is going on in the world, wars or anything, Lord, and even pandemic, Lord. We know if we focus on you, Lord, we can overcome those trials, we can overcome those tribulations and continue to focus on you, Lord. Lord, just please hope that we can really recognize the power of you, Lord. Not only can we ask for prayer, but be thankful for it, Lord. We know that through you, all things are possible. We also need to be grateful for the blessings. We don't deserve anything, Lord. We don't deserve your grace, your saving power, Lord, but you give it to us freely. So just please let us just remember all things you've given us, Lord, and just to truly be thankful. And Lord, just finally just continue to keep us fervent in this time of prayer and for us to keep your mind on you, Lord. And just now I pray, amen. Again, I want to say thank you to our elders for their vision, for their heart. I thank you to our preacher selection committee for the participants that we had this morning. I thank you for listening. May God bless you. May God bless all of us.
Remember this? I hope from now on that whenever you see one of these, you'll think of something a whole, whole lot more important than just a game. Whatever it is we have to do, let us sew it up on both ends and all around the middle with prayer. And if we do that, it just can't come apart in the middle. We don't want to close this service without saying that we want to be of help to you. God loves us and he has a wonderful plan for our life. That plan begins when we hear evidence that Jesus is the Christ and that we believe this evidence so much that we're willing to try to turn our lives around to serve our Lord. Then Jesus promises that even though we owe a debt that we cannot owe, that he is willing to pay that debt for us. You're then baptized, you, raise, you rise up from the water free of debt, free of sin, and you begin to walk in the newness of life. If it's your desire this morning to become a Christian, great, we can help you. If you want to study the Bible with someone, great, we can help you. If you're already a Christian and you need prayers for some kind of a special burden, that's great too. We can help you. In just a minute, some of our elders are going to be standing in front of us. If we can be of assistance to you in any way, please let that be made known as we stand and sing. Hallelujah, praise God.